So I'm back where I was last Thursday when I couldn't see a thing. And it's a completely different story. I can see for miles everywhere. It's going to be a gorgeous day today, very warm. Um, but of course we're up on the moor so there's going to be a nice breeze. I've got all my drinks, I've got my snacks, I've got all my bits and pieces. Um, I can see a sign just on the road to the left of me, it says welcome to Saddleworth, so I'm right on the border of Saddleworth. So I'm going to get myself organised. I thought this might be really busy, but I'm the only person in the car park again. So I'm going to get organised and let's get this, uh, let's get this hike going. So here we are. This is our starting point. So we're heading over the road. Very breezy. Here we go. Seen that before. And there we are. back to the road and you can just see the roof of my car sticking up there and you can follow the Pennine way the other way as well so let's step on out I've made a DIY adjustment to my wind muffler remember last time it got blown off and although I don't think that'll happen today, I've found a way of keeping it on there permanently. <laughs> Does the job. very different to the last section of the Pennine Way I did. Well, it seems to be at the moment. Again, it's much flatter. Expecting that car park to be quite full this morning. I don't know why. Coming in on that main road, almost as far as the Dowry Reservoir, that road was at a standstill. So much traffic. <coughs> but today, up here anyway, is officially the first day of the summer holidays for the kids. So, no school run. It's gonna be a hot one today. This isn't going to be a as long hike. I reckon about 4.4 miles according to Google but we have a few landmarks to look at which will be nice
I'm glad I didn't do this last week. It would have been a really stupid idea. Definitely grateful for this easy to walk path this week. <laughs> Pond.
The walls don't get maintained like they used to, so instead you have wire fences. I would imagine it would take up too much time now for farmers to maintain stone walls. But people still do them. There are lots of very good stone walls about. Very often you see wire fences up now. It doesn't quite go so well with the the landscape, but I guess it keeps the sheep in. into the distance. I didn't bring the binoculars today. There are no reservoirs within easy reach. And given that I kind of hiked on Monday, I don't feel like massively exerting myself today. The only thing breaking the silence up here today. I wish I could be less crunchy, but it's a bit difficult. Listen to that. That's amazing. Not even a plane in the sky. Right, we're dipping down here and then we've got a bit of a steep climb up the other side.
There is a reservoir just through there. I did see that on my map actually, but the cross country route is a little bit circuitous and there was potential for losing the track, so I thought, ah. Listen. I actually heard a cricket. It's my first cricket since I've been up on the moors. What does this say? Marsden Moor, White Hassock National Trust. That hill done. Most easterly point in the county of Lancashire. I'll give you a map to show you that. I love those little marker stones that give you information. I need more of those. So, the borders here are Lancashire and Yorkshire, and when I was driving in, I'd seen the sign for entering the West Riding of Yorkshire. It's just fun to think that you're walking a border, and I would imagine back in days gone by, there were all sorts of battles won and lost over borders and neighbouring clans and things.
can see a single sheep. I don't know if you can see him. There's his head sticking up. Just the one. It's really difficult to avoid the sound of aircraft, even when you can't hear anything else. They're just everywhere. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see a plane up there. Quite a few airports in this area. Has Leeds got an airport? I think it has. Leeds. Manchester, Liverpool, they're all just a stone's throw for an aeroplane. But you imagine, you know, even a hundred years ago, the skies would have been silent apart from birds. It's extraordinary to think that you wouldn't hear engines of any type. You'd hear horses' hooves and the rolling of cartwheels. I love the idea of that. There's too much noise clutter in the world. It makes it very difficult to do anything really. I'd like to get a handle on meditation, but you can't do that when you have cars with souped up exhausts screaming past your windows every day and people rowing in the street and emergency vehicles. I live on the route, main route for the emergency vehicles, so the sound of sirens is a constant and you kind of get used to it you just stop acknowledging it after a while but it takes a while and of course there are other things that irritate like noisy neighbours and all sorts of other little things I'm not very good with noise easily irritated by ambient noises, more so than things like sirens. And I think I've always been like that. I like silence. I know a lot of people find it uncomfortable. I know my mum doesn't like silence. She will fill it with whatever noise she can. But I love silence. thankful for that breeze up here because it's going to be hot today. This was supposed to be the cooler of the two days and the weather's changed over the last few days but I have something I need to do tomorrow now. So I thought I'd stick to Monday and of course Tuesday evening I have to go and clean. So if I've done a a five or six mile hike and then I have to clean in the evening. That will probably be enough to finish me off. Oh, 
I think I see my first landmark ahead. You can't miss it really, can you? It's another trig point. This is actually been quite a short hike by the looks of it. So that's the Mossmoor trig point. gang of crows hanging out behind there watching me and I think here might be a good point to get my water bottle this is the Moss Moor trig point not as well marked as the other one miss them. And there's the view. I can see somebody walking in the distance and I have a feeling that that tower there is my next point of call. We'll have a look at the map and see. Yeah, that might be my next, my final point, or almost my final point. I've got to negotiate another car park and a main road. So there's another car park, another free little lay-by car park somewhere up ahead on the main road, which is another parking point if you wanted to start there. Um, I'm not going to be using that one. I'm going to be crossing it and heading to my final destination because this is a relatively short stretch. erosion here. So they're trying to hold on to the water. I wonder if that's to repair 
the areas of peat and bring back the plants. Looks like there's probably a car park somewhere up there. Look at that wind farm, can you see that in the distance? I don't like these wind farms, they absolutely ruin the landscape. And I'm not entirely sure how much good they actually do, because apparently there is a massive graveyard of the blades, because the blades don't last that long and they don't know what to do with them. So it's supposed to be clean energy, but they're stocking up on landfill, which just seems like a bad way to try and make things more sustainable. <clears throat> Everything that's sustainable seems to have a bad end to it, you know use cotton clothes, not synthetic fibres, but cotton uses a lot more water. Electric cars and solar panels leave behind huge amounts of physical rubbish in the form of battery parts and all sorts of things. And of course, since solar panels became all the rage, there's been a huge influx of cheap imports from places like China and those solar panels don't last as long as the good ones but people buy them cheap and then replace them more often so what you're going to end up with is even more rubbish unrecyclable rubbish so it just seems like a bit of a joke to me it's just a way for someone to make more money out of our fears the only sustainable thing is the thing you don't buy or the thing that you already have that you keep and keep using. That's the most sustainable way to do things. Which is why I buy a lot of second-hand and pre-loved and all that sort of thing. There's a little hiker up in front. I'm not going to record. away for a moment. He asked me for the time. And it turns out it's only 9.25 in the morning. I feel like this is going to be a short hike. One thing I don't tend to do when I'm out here is stop and just enjoy the landscape. So if I'm running really early today and it looks like I am, I think... Um, I'll find a place to stop and snack for longer. Look at that traffic. Can you see that? That, I think, is the M62. And I don't know if that's normal. I mean, it is a motorway, so... Everything seems to be permanently at a standstill these days. Rather be out here than stuck there commuting. How depressing. I don't miss my commuter days. When I used to work in London, I used to spend five hours a day commuting. And I couldn't afford the train back then because the trains, well, down in the south, they're an absolute joke. They're so expensive. So I used to drive and there was a, a car park under London Bridge that was a fiver for the day. So I used to drive up there, but work had to get used to the fact that I could, that I would just turn up when I turned up because you never knew what the traffic was going to be like and generally it was horrendous and that was back in the days before 
I had Spotify and podcasts and things like that. So all you would get would be You'd have a CD player or the radio, which is depressing. I hate the radio. Radios just give you trashy music, endless adverts and depressing news. So I won't listen to the radio. It's just horrible. Might as well watch the TV news for the difference it makes. And it's nice that you can just say, I don't want to listen to that type of social media. Because contrary to what people tell you, you can just say no to things. There's a little man hiking at the top there. I'll probably meet him on the way back if he's doing a round trip. Um, yeah, so you don't have to listen to everything. You don't have to acknowledge everything. I don't do the news, I don't do radio. I do selected podcasts, I do selected YouTube. That's all you need to do. I think that's a bird of prey up ahead. Yes, that's a bird of prey. Look, he's just floating on the wind there. He's not actually hovering, but he's just working the wind. He's too big for a kestrel, which is our only bird of prey that can truly hover. But they're masters of the air. Oh, this is such a glorious walk. Another wind farm. I'm not entirely sure what all these city-like areas are below. Um, I will add little bits of text wherever I see something that looks like it needs marking. It's big down there. My geography is not that good. I didn't study it that closely this morning. This really is a fabulous walk though. This is quite an easy one as well if you're looking for an easy stretch. <clears throat> I reckon end to end and back again for me will be about about four and a half miles, but this is a nice, easy, flat, mostly, stretch. The path is good. So if you're looking for something like that, this might be ideal for you. See lots of heather here. It's just coming into flower. These little cairns are everywhere. I don't know why there are so many. We don't really need marker points here. I think people just like
hiding their cigarette packets by the looks of it. Nice. There's always someone, isn't there? Always somebody. in front of that big transmitter there. Now that is my next or my main landing point and it's called Windy Hill Transmitter which is the most unoriginal name for because <laughs> everywhere's windy here. So just in front there should be a road and another car park and then you've got Windy Hill there and then if I keep going I will reach my final destination on it. <laughs> Not just a car park, it's a route stop. I think this is going to be quite busy here. I don't think we'll be stopping at the car park somehow. But we will go and have a look at the transmitter. I kind of like those structures. I really like electricity pylons. My dad was an electrical engineer and he used to do a lot of on call so he'd get called out in the middle of the night to go to a substation in London to switch a breaker or something where something had tripped or whatever and I used to be a chronic insomniac as a child and very often I was awake and I'd go with him and he'd take me into the substation and show me the equipment and some of it was most definitely vintage and you go into these substations and he'd show me all the things they're all gone now they've all been scrapped and you'd hear the hum of electricity it's such an immense power and so electricity pylons on their many forms I find quite fascinating. There are no pylons up on the moors, they're not allowed, although they're now allowing wind farms so that's a bit disappointing. This is quite a big car park. If you need a car park in this area, this is the place to go. It seems to have a lot of room. That's good. 
good to know. One of the things I notice on Google reviews when, when I'm looking at the map, the car parks and getting a feel for them is how many people complain there's not enough parking space. One of the first rules of hiking is get there early. And I can imagine by the time I get back to my car again later, that car park is going to be full. So I always try to get out as early as possible. Especially if it's going to be warm, because you want to beat the heat. But also because the early part of the day is the best bit. The morning is the best bit. And I am becoming more of a a lark these days than an owl as I've got older. I guess that's an age thing. <laughs> you find as you get older you start waking up earlier but needing to go to bed at like nine o'clock at night. the Windy Hill transmitter. That was my second marker point on my route. Can't get lost with marker points like that, can you? sign there that says Calderdale. We have to try and cross this road. It's going to be fun. Calderdale. Right, I'm going to focus on crossing the road at this point. Yes, magnificent Calderdale that says. It says Rishworth down there. And this is Lancashire County Milrow Local Board. And we're going to head up. is not a nice car park. Oh dear. This looks like someone's been fly tipping. Camping. I can't work out which. I'm not going to get involved, that's for sure. There is the Windy Hill transmitter. 
transmitting, I guess. Good timing at the car park. I don't like someone's got a tent up. Right, I'm going to check my map. So, I am very nearly at my final point, as designated by the road down there. Like someone's camping up there, and someone's dumped some sofas. There's always somebody, isn't there? Helicopter. Looks like an emergency services helicopter. from humans again. Yeah, someone's camped up there. It looks like they're living there. And if this is National Trust land, you can't do that, but... Let's not get involved. Caution, helicopter operating, please take care in this area. Oh, they're restoring the Mordens. I was watching something on the TV the other day about how they are bringing in... I think they're bringing in seed to reseed the areas of peat that have become exposed. Um, to try and protect that peat. I think that was one of the things I saw. But they are busy trying to repair decades and decades of damage. A lot of it goes back to the industrial age. Because once that peat starts to erode, it's hard to protect. It's thousands of years of peat down there. So they need to ensure that they are protecting it. This looked like it was going to be quite a big landmark. But this is <laughs> very unmonumental. So in front of me is the Pennine Way Bridge <laughs> and it looked like it was going to be a momentous bridge and it isn't. I mean it's only crossing the motorway. But 
pictures that I saw of it made it look a lot more exciting than it really is. This is supposed to be my end point for the day. But I don't feel like I've done very much. And I may keep walking for a bit. I'm going to stop here and just have a look at what's around. There are two other things that I'm hoping to find while I'm here. And they are the border stones. So on this side of the bridge, there should be a Lancashire border stone. And on the other side should be the Yorkshire border stone. So I will do these three things and then I will stop and have a look at what else is going on. I'll have a look at the miles I've done. It's probably getting on for 10 o'clock now. <clears throat> There's the motorway cutting through the landscape like a knife. Oh, that bridge is bigger than it looked from up there. <laughs> so hopefully I can turn left before this bridge and find the border stone. Thought would be rather fun. So let's go down here first. It shouldn't be very far along. So let's cross the bridge. This is the Pennine Way Bridge. It goes over the M62. I don't like heights. Look at that traffic. How depressing. This is a very high bridge, which is weirdly making my legs go funny. the border stone. I don't know if you can see them. There's one on the left, there's a very dull looking red rose and then on the other side, parallel to it, is the other one. So I was not going to get anywhere near those because they are right down on the motorway. I don't know how people have managed to photograph those. But I'm not doing it. There we are. Pennine Way Bridge.
Now I am in Yorkshire. Look at all these signs. So there's your Pennine Way. Yorkshire Water Permissive Path. Public Footpath, Crow's Co-op, or Crow's Coop. The GM Ringway. And the Pennine Way National Trail. I'm going to go up, there's a cairn at the top of the hill and I'm going to sit there for my break. I'm going to have a look at the map and then decide if I'm going to carry on for a bit or turn and come back. I want to see how long I've been out. The temperature is really going to peak after 12 o'clock. and I don't want to get roasted. A little cairn in the distance there, right on the top. I think that's where I'm going to stop and get a view there. the road noise a bit. There we go. There's the transmitter. There's the bridge. There's the M62. Tango drink that I picked up as a freebie, heavens knows when. But I took a fruit shoot thing on my last journey, and that little bit of sugar, that little bit of taste, was really helpful actually. That's not too bad. It says it's sugar free, but it's going to be full of rubbish. a bit of fun to the um, proceedings there because I've still got my water. I'm going to have a slice of silvery malt life.
So according to my Oh okay. So according to my little app here, I have walked for one hour twenty minutes and I have walked two point nine one miles. I've done just over seven thousand steps. And I've burned 358 calories apparently, which has probably just been replaced by Saurine and Tango. So that's pretty good. It's got a long way to go to beat my first hike where I got lost. So if I just reverse my route, I'll have done over five miles. It's now half past ten. Which, if I left now, I'd probably be back for about twelve. Home by one. So I'm just going to have a look at the map and see where this goes. I could go to Blackstone Edge. Which is another trig point. That's 27 minutes and it's going to add 1.1 miles. I kind of feel tempted to go as far as Blackstone Edge. Will get me halfway up to the point where my next um, car park is. So it means there will only be a short amount of my journey I will have missed. So maybe I'll do that. It's probably only going to add about half an hour onto my journey each way. And I feel okay today. So let's get back on the road. Right. Give it a trace. Let's keep walking for a bit, see where we end up.
I'm looking for the next trig point which means I'm looking for a white marker on a high point. I suspect it's going to be up there somewhere. I think that's probably going to be the high point. Now this walk should only be about a mile. So we'll see how we get on. Also remembering that I've got to do the whole thing in reverse.
It's funny how when you're walking these places, the maps look enormous. The stretches of distance look huge. And then you walk these places and before you know it, you've done the route and you're wondering, should I keep going? And why not? That's this stretch that I'm now walking would have been an unknown to me because I was going to walk as far as the Pennine Way Bridge and then on my next hike I was going to drive to the next car park which is over that hill there but I was going to keep walking upwards and I wasn't going to walk back down because it wasn't a massive stretch but the other way some lots of interesting reservoirs and things to do so by going halfway to this next trig point kind of partly fills the gap which is why I was kind of inspired to keep going really and because I'm feeling pretty good there's a sheep in front of me and it's looking at me <clears throat> I suspect it'll run when it sees me get close but hill doesn't feel quite as hilly now. It's actually quite gentle. And of course coming back I'll be coming down all the way. Yeah, that sheep isn't interested in me. Always grateful when sheep are not interested in me. two of them. Joy. <laughs> sticking to the path. <laughs> Don't blame him, it's quite boggy up here. The peat is holding on to its water here. I don't see a trig point yet.
they went left or right, I could go past them. But they're going to stick to the path all the way up, aren't they? Uh. Yeah, we're doing okay. It's right up ahead of me on the top, according to the map. We have Blackstone Edge, and then there is Blackstone Edge Trig Point. So I'll make that my last pit stop for snacks before I start walking home. I can't do the whole thing in reverse yet. And as usual, I won't be taking you home with me because you've seen it. And that means less editing for me. It takes me about two days to edit a walking video of about, I don't know, two to three hours. I do a rough edit, delete the chunks of stuff that I know I don't want, add in the sections where if I want to do a fast forward, like I've um, like I've done the car journey and I want to speed it up and overlay it with some music. One of the good things about being monetized on YouTube is that you get a lot of music on a YouTube music library that you can use for free. And there's some good music on there and all the music I use on my YouTube channel now comes from that. There's a really good range of everything from jazz and classical to, you know, electronic and mood music. There's a lot of it though, I haven't been through all of it, but you can search by genre and length and style. So that's really handy because trying to add music to YouTube when you're not monetized is really difficult. There are YouTube channels which put out music you can use for free so long as you include the information they've included, which obviously includes the title, links, the artist, etc. But you also can't take the mickey, so you can't use loads of it. I have a few which I use on my business channel when I'm doing fast forwards and things. Someone dumped their sandwiches. I mean, what's the matter with people? Couldn't you just take them home? There's a lot more rubbish out on this trail than the others. to Blackstone. Blackstone Edge is definitely going to be my limit for today and I will definitely have ended up doing more than five miles. <laughs> Hopefully I won't regret it. It's quite a gentle hike but lots of it I guess. Those sheep are still leading the way. They're still looking at me. They're like, why 
Is she following us? seen one person up here so far. <sighs> I'm so muddy. My legs are filthy. I'm covered in mud. <sighs> reservoir. I'm not doing any reservoirs today. <laughs> We're sticking to the roots. Christmas tree growing there. Oh, we've got two Christmas trees. How cute. This is probably Blackstone Edge. I'm going to stick to the path. I think that is the Blackstone Edge. And the trig point is just a bit further on. Fabulous view.
can't be far away. I'm confused as to who would walk all the way up here and then dump a drinks can. It's very weird. Front, and then the trig points just after that, but I'm nearly there. We're okay, we can do this. glistening river down there of traffic. This is all black stone edge then. I keep saying that. And they are definitely black stones. Oh wow. That view needs looking at. Let's take the path. Go and have a look at that because that looks insane. And windy. <laughs> I'm glad I strapped on my little muffler thing.
so windy here. Wow. I love a beautiful view. If I could have a view like that outside my window every day, I'd just sit there all day. <laughs> And I see in front of me a trig point. And there's a man who's just set, oh no, he's climbing down. There's a man up there. The second human I've seen on this route. I think there's two people. If I walk slow enough, they might bugger off. Where is he going? Is he coming my way? Yes he is. I'll have to stop recording at some point. Never mind. I'm going to stop recording now, pick up the end a bit. People are always very friendly up here. First thing everyone says is, what a great day for it. It's always a weather reference when you're British. And it is a great day for it. Look at this view. Oh my goodness. And there is the Blackstone Edge Trig Point. I don't think I want to go and stand all the way up there. But there are some points bit lower down. Oh man, look at this. Oh wow. I'm going to do a panoramic photo of this. I can do the video. people get joy out of.
been here about five minutes. I'd have the last of my snack. Here's the trick point, look. Four hikers have come past me. And one of them decided to stand right next to me. And I thought, this is the per perfect place for some nutter to murder somebody. <laughs> but who would come all the way out here in the hope of finding someone to murder? You'd be so knackered by the time you got there, you wouldn't have the energy to do it. It's just stunning here. I mean, look at this. Perfect destination. So, this is where I'm going to leave you. One trig point, one incredible view. I'm going to start heading back in a minute. I feel really good. Uh, oh, I was going to look at my mileage, wasn't I? Let's see what I've done. So, that was interesting. I have done 4.16 miles, which means that by the time I get back, I'll have done the same mileage as I did on that hike where I missed the reservoirs. But this is an easier run. Hey B. Uh, so it's goodbye from me on the trig point with this stunning view. Unless of course I see something really interesting to show you on the way back. You never know. It's about 20 past 11. It's so cool up here. I don't think even when it's really hot, there's much chance of you getting overheated up here, because I don't think this wind ever stops. Oh, but it's just stunning here. Right, I'm going to leave you here. Catch you on the next one. Bye bye. I saw him on my walk back. He was photographing nature. He was photographing butterflies and damselflies in that big pool that I saw on the way out. Anyway, I'm now back at the car. Snack time. I've changed my boots, chilled off. Look at that window, it's really warm. Um, I did. 3 hours 24 minutes, according to this I burnt 932 calories, I did 18,848 steps and I did 7.73 miles so I think I was about half a mile short on that last big hike I did. That feels like enough. I feel pretty good. And the time is quarter past three, uh, it's quarter past one, sorry. And now I'm gonna head home, get on with the rest of my day. I'm gonna eat my apple first though. I will put a route map here so you can see where I went today. It's very warm here. Just having a look at the temperature. It says it's 23 here. Back home, it's 26. OK, 
catch you later.